Hello, hello, welcome back. If you are new, please consider subscribing. My name is Yadi and I create educational videos for beauty professionals in training. And for those who like to continue learning, you guys follow me on all social media platforms as Glam and Beyond. Now this is our part two, part two of the chemistry terminology state bore prep. So if you are coming from watching part one, Thank you for following up. I want to wish you guys good luck on your test. Don't forget to always go back and read your textbook for more information on each subject as obviously the information is not limited to what is on this video. But with that said, let's get started. Number one, molecule. What is the definition for a molecule? A molecule is two or more atoms bonded together, forming the smallest unit of a substance that still has its properties. Think of an atom, again, as Lego pieces. When you snap them together, you get a molecule, like a tiny Lego structure. Another example, you guys, many skincare ingredients like hyaluronic acid, glycerin, and salicylic acid are molecules made up of multiple atoms bonded together. Hope that helps. Number two, neutrons. Neutrons are neutral particles found in the nucleus of an atom. They have no charge, they're neither positive nor negative. Neutrons are like glue or stabilizers in a building. They keep the structure stable, but don't have their own charge. Example, neutrons are directly noticeable in daily life, but they are essential in all matter, including water, skin cells, and beauty products. Without neutrons, atoms wouldn't be stable. The molecules in skin care or hair products wouldn't exist as we know them. Number three, oil in water emulsion. What does oil in water emulsion mean? An oil in water emulsion is a mixture where tiny oil droplets are spread, dispersed, throughout water. Example, most lotions, creams, and moisturizers are oil and water emulsions. They feel light, non-greasy, and absorb quickly, which is why they're common in skincare. A facial moisturizer where water hydrates the skin and a small amount of oil softens it. Number four, overexposure. What's the definition of overexposure? Well, Overexposure happens when you're exposed to too much of a chemical or substance too often or for too long, more than your body can safely handle. Like standing in the sun too long, a little sun, you guys, a little sunlight is healthy, but overexposure leads to what? A sunburn. So that will be an overexposure of sun. That's why ventilation, gloves, and following safety rules are so important. Overexposure. Number five, our next term is oxidation reduction, also known as redox. Now, a redox reaction is a chemical reaction where one substance loses electrons, oxidation, and another gains electrons, reduction. They always happen together. When one thing gives up electrons, another one must take them. Think of it like passing a ball, electrons. The person who loses the ball is being oxidized. The person who catches the ball is being reduced. Example, hair coloring and lightning involve redox reactions. Hair dye molecules change color because of oxidation. Number six, oxidizing agent. An oxidizing agent is a substance that releases oxygen. Imagine an oxidizing agent as a fire starter. It supplies oxygen or steals electrons to keep 
the reaction going. Example, hydrogen peroxide in hair color or bleach lightener is oxidizing agent. It releases oxygen to break down natural hair pigment. Disinfectants, in the other hand also, may contain oxidizing agents to do what? To kill bacteria by releasing oxygen. Oxidizing agent. Number seven, pH scale. The pH scale is a measurement chart from zero to 14 that shows how acidic, neutral, or alkaline a substance is. Let's break down the pH scale. So zero to six is acidic. Examples will be lemon juice, which holds about a pH of a two, vinegar about a pH of three, um, seven will be considered neutral, is balanced, it's not acidic, nor is it alkaline. An example will be pure water. Now, from eight to 14, that will be considered alkaline. Examples will be baking soda, which holds a pH of about nine. Ammonia, pH of about 11. That will be alkaline. Think of it again like a ruler for chemistry. Instead of measuring inches, it measures acidity versus alkalinity. Everyday beauty examples for you guys would be skin's natural pH is slightly acidic at about 4.5 to 5.5. I think you knew that already. This is called the acid mantle, which protects against bacteria. Chemical peels are usually more acidic with low pH to do what? Well, to exfoliate. Soaps and relaxers can be alkaline. They can have a higher pH, which opens the hair cuticle or also the skin barrier. pH scale. Hope you're still with me. We're on number eight, physical change. What is a physical change? Well, a change in the form or physical properties of a substance without a chemical reaction or the creation of a new substance. So, like ice melting into water, it looks different, but it's still water. It's still H2O. Example, water turning into steam during a facial. That would be a physical change. Grinding eyeshadow into powder. Physical change. Same product, different form. Number nine, physical mixture. A physical mixture is when two or more substances are combined but not chemically changed, but they can still be separated by physical means, like a fruit salad. The fruits are mixed together, but each piece keeps its own identity. Or like sand and salt in a bowl, mix but not bonded together. Example, salt water. Salt plus water mixed, but the salt can be separated by evaporation. Physical mixture. Number 10, physical properties. What's physical properties? It is characteristics that can be determined without a chemical reaction and that do not cause a chemical change in the substance. Like looking at someone's clothes, height, or hair color, you can see or measure these traits without changing who they are. Examples. The thickness of a cream or the texture of a scrub are physical properties. Hair elasticity or diameter are also examples of physical properties. Number 11, protons. What are protons? Protons are positively charged particles found in the nucleus, the center of an atom. Think of the nucleus like a soccer ball cluster. Protons equals positively charged balls. Neutrons equals neutral balls that help stabilize the nucleus. Example, protons are part of all matter, including water, hair, skin, and even skincare products. 
The number of protons in an atom determine what element it is. For example, hydrogen has one proton, carbon has six. Number 12. Reducing agent. A reducing agent is a substance that gives electrons to another substance, causing that substance to be reduced. While doing this, the reducing agent itself gets oxidized, meaning it loses electrons. Think of a reducing agent like a donor. It gives away electrons to help another substance gain strength, be reduced. Example, in hair coloring, thioglycolic acid in perm solutions act as a reducing agent. It breaks hair disulfide bonds by donating electrons. In chemical reactions, reducing agents help neutralize oxidizing agents. Number 13, silicones. Silicones are synthetic ingredients made from silicone, oxygen, and other elements that create a smooth, protective layer on the skin or hair. Think of silicones like a light, breathable raincoat that protect without completely blocking everything underneath. Example, in skincare, they lock in moisture, make creams feel silky, and help reduce friction. In hair care, they smooth frizz, add shine, and protect hair from heat. Silicones. Number 14, safety data sheet, also known as SDS. A safety data sheet is a document that provides important information about a chemical, including its hazards, safe handling, and emergency measures. Like a manual or instruction guide for chemicals, it tells you what the chemical is, how it is used, safely and what to do if something goes wrong. Example, in a salon or spa, an SDS is required for all professional products, including hair dyes, nail polishes, disinfectants, and even chemical peels. It shows first aid steps, flammability info, and protective equipment needed. Safety data sheet. Number 15, sodium hydroxide. What's the definition? Sodium hydroxide is a strong alkaline base chemical used in many beauty and chemical applications, commonly known as lye. Example, used in chemical hair relaxers to straighten hair. It is also found in drain cleaners outside of beauty because it dissolves grease. In soap making, saponification, it reacts with oils to create soap. Sodium hydroxide. Number 16, surfactants. Surfactants are ingredients that help water and oil mix. Think of surfactants like a bridge or mediator between oil and water that allow the two to interact. Examples found in shampoos, cleansers, body washes, and facial soaps. They help remove dirt, oil, and makeup while allowing water to rinse it off. Surfactants. Number 17. Suspensions. What's the definition? A suspension is a mixture where solid particles are spread throughout a liquid, but the particles don't dissolve and may settle over time. Think of it like sand in water. The sand floats for a while, but eventually sinks to the bottom. Another example, exfoliating scrubs often contain solid beads in a gel or even cream form. These are suspensions. Some medicated or clay masks are suspensions where the active particles remain suspended until applied. Suspensions. 
And you guys, I completely understand these are not terms or terminology that is everyone's favorite to go over, but trust me, just listening and just reviewing so that you're able to identify or recognize when seen on any test is definitely something you should definitely do. And I'm sure that's why you're here. So good job for doing that. Let's keep going. We're almost at the finish line. Number 18, thioglycolic acid. What is thioglycolic acid? Well, thioglycolic acid is a strong chemical reducing agent commonly used in beauty services to break down the bonds in hair. Think of hair like a ladder held together by bonds. Thioglycolic acid acts like scissors, cutting some of those bonds so that the hair can be reshaped, whether it's curled or even straightened. So examples of that, it's the main ingredient in permanent waving, like perm solutions, helping curl hair, like a curly perm. Also used in chemical hair relaxers to straighten the hair. Found in some hair removal creams where it weakens the hair so that it's wiped away easily, like a Veet or a Nares, for example. Thioglycolic acid. Number 19. Volatile alcohols. Volatile alcohols are alcohols that evaporate quickly when exposed to air. Think of them like a puddle of rubbing alcohol. It disappears much faster than water because it's lighter and more eager to turn into vapor. Example, found in hairsprays, perfumes, toners, and hand sanitizers. Common ones include ethanol, isopropyl alcohol, and SD alcohol. They help products dry quickly and can give a light, non-greasy feel. Volatile alcohols. Number 20, water in oil emulsion. What is water in oil emulsion? It is a mixture where tiny drops of water are trapped inside oil. The oil is the main ingredient on the outside. Think of it like butter or mayonnaise. Lots of oil with little water mixed in. Example, found in rich creams, ointments, and sunscreens. They're thicker, a little bit greasier, and more moisturizing because oils sit on the outside creating a protective barrier. Water in oil emulsion. Well, you guys, this concludes our part two of our chemistry terminology prep. And I hope you found the information helpful. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share it with a friend. And if you're new here, don't forget to consider subscribing. Follow me on all social media platforms as Glam and Beyond. Feel free to scan the QR code. Thank you again for watching. Thank you for your continued support. Please know that it never goes unnoticed. I want to wish you guys the best of luck on your test. And as always, let's keep going. Let's keep growing and I'll see you on the next one. Bye guys.